What's happening everybody? Trey here and today reactions to the classics. I'm going to be reacting to Sublime's third and final record, their self-titled record right here. And I want to shout out our uh, friend and patron and Sublime fam of the channel, Shane, for suggesting this one to me. Uh, Shane brought to me 40 Answers to Freedom and Robin the Hood um, last year. So if you want to go check those reviews out, you can go do so. And uh, yeah, we're finishing up their catalog here today. It's uh, May here at the time I'm recording it, getting the uh, summer weather coming in and Shane said Sublime's kind of a, a summertime band for him so he's trying to manifest those good weather vibes right there and so it uh, should be a good time today and uh, all that to say man let's just get into the quick facts on this as I mentioned their third and final studio record released in July of 1996 yeah went to 13 on the charts and this is an astronomical man up to today it has spent over 170 weeks on the uh, billboard chart man so um their most successful record commercially for sure um a little bit about the group if you don't know they were formed all the way back in 88 in long beach california bradley noel is the vocalist and guitarist uh they have uh, eric wilson on bass and then drummer bud uh and then they toured heavily from their inception um in their first release 40 ounces to freedom was released in 92 and um that just kind of sparked uh, sparked them in southern california and then the rest is history as they say they signed to mca and um then released their second record robin the hood in 94 and then here we are in 96 where this record comes up uh by the time it came to their major label debut bradley had been struggling with heroin addiction uh sublime had recorded over a period of three months in austin in sessions characterized by heavy drug use and lots of partying the album's musical style contains elements of punk, reggae, ska, as well as dancehall, hip-hop, dub, uh, with tempos ranging widely. Uh, Bradley's lyrical subject matter relates to relationships, prostitution, riots, addiction. Noel had been ejected from recording near its completion and unfortunately was found dead of heroin overdose in May of 96, two months prior to the release of this record, leading to the band to break up, of course. Uh, bolstered by numerous hit singles, among them What I Got, Santeria, and Wrong Way. The record proved enormously successful, despite the band being defunct and thus not promoting the album through touring. It sold over 5 million copies in the States by the end of the decade and is still popular to this day. And Bradley's addiction worsened from 95 to 96 and kind of a sad uh, little side note of the story, their drummer, uh, Bud, uh, Bud Goff, uh, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his right name uh, right, but he uh, raided Bradley's stash uh, the very night um, that uh, Bradley passed away, shot up and um, he awoke next to Bradley, who was dead. And um, man, I, I could only imagine how, uh, you know, just um, traumatic that experience would have been. Um, but later told the reporter that, quote, I thought that was probably supposed to be me. Um, this was record was largely recorded at Willie Nelson's studio in Austin, Texas, actually, between February and May of 96. Uh, although he previously attempted to stay clean, Noel returned to using heroin more vigorously than ever during this time. According to producer Paul Leary, on some days the band would arrive at nine with margaritas in one hand and instruments in the other ready to record, and on others they nearly burned the place down. Noel was so addled with the drug that he was sent home by uh, the producer Leary here before the recording process was complete. Quote, there were times where someone had to go to the bathroom to see if Brad was still alive. According to Bradley's father, it took his son three days to recover, commenting it was the worst I'd ever seen him. So, uh, unfortunately, not a lot of cheeriness on the quick facts today. But uh, we're about to get into the music now. As you can see at the bottom, man, we're going to kick this thing off with Garden Grove. Um, heavy bass line is based on Courtney Melody's 1988 single, A Ninja Me Ninja. I don't know that jam, but if you do, uh, listen for that bass line. Final two minutes of the song also contain samples of the track Five Nights of Bleeding by uh, reggae artist Linton Johnson. So, I'm really not familiar with, I mean, I've heard Santeria before, and um, I have Seed Hearted on here, um, but uh, besides that, you know, these aren't ringing a huge bell, but they have a, a lot of these have a ton of streams on Spotify. So we'll see once I get going into the record. But uh, just going to sit back, enjoy the music. As always, have the lyrics pulled up due to copyright. Won't be here on YouTube, but you can check out the full video on Vimeo, which is linked free of charge below, man. And um, yeah, all that to say, thanks again to Shane. Let's get into it. Hey, Garden Grove, I quite enjoyed the uh, ending instrumental right there, that sample of uh, that track, uh, Five Nights of Bleeding. I, uh, I quite enjoyed, man. 
man, and kind of uh, had a cool effect to it. But man, the the lyrics themselves were quite powerful and personal to Bradley um, as well. Um, definitely started with that you know reggae ska uh, type of sound right there that you kind of expect from Sublime, man. So uh, they're they're kicking it off um, in, on a good way. And he he mentions um, they took the trip to Garden Grove. It smelled like Lou Dog inside the van. Apparently. Uh, Lou Dog was actually Bradley's dog, a Dalmatian. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of uh, references to uh, Lou throughout the rest of the track right here and how much he means to Bradley. Um, and But I think the last verse was uh, was quite uh, poignant and um, just kind of gives a little insight to, you know, Noel's state of mind at this point. Uh, getting hassled by the man, waking up to an alarm, sticking needles in your arm, picking up trash on the freeway, feeling depressed every day he just comes out and says it uh picking my dog up at the pound living in a tweaker pad getting yelled at by my dad saying i'm happy when i'm not um all these things i do they're waiting for you um so not uh, just the whole party happy go lucky type of sublime that um would pop up at points you know in their previous records so uh I'm, I'm curious how the rest of the album is going to um transpire lyrically here um and if we uh, started off on a really strong note man so given that the heart treatment and now we're going to what i got over 300 million streams here on spotify at the time of this recording their biggest radio hit went to 29 on the Hot 100, number one on the Modern Rock Chart, 83 on the Greatest Guitar Songs of All Time by Rolling Stone, and was released uh, posthumously after Bradley's death. Uh, song's chorus is a lip from Loving by Half Pint, and melody is similar to Lady Madonna by The Beatles. You might have heard of them. So, uh, curious to check this one out, and if I actually uh, know this. I mean, surely I do, man. Surely I'm going to recognize it, but uh, let's jump in. Track. What a great track. I can see why it was so successful on the chart. It just had a, uh, a bit, definitely a contrast to Garden Grove, right? And just um, kind of a, the sound and, um, you know, some of the lyrics are a little bit more um, easygoing, so to speak. Ludoc still gets a lot of shout outs right here. I think the, the melody of the Lady Madonna melody was quite apparent. And um, again, just kind of helped give it a bit of an uplifting sound musically. Uh, there were still some, you know, uh, more uh, intense lyrics in here at times, you know, drugs and, you know, riots and, and everything that's uh, going on. But you get to that chorus, loving is what I got. I said, remember that, loving is what I got. Um, it, it just kind of uh, had a bit of a, a chill, mellow vibe to it, man. And um, he kind of notes, too, he isn't going to stress about the things going on in his life um, because let the loving, let the loving come back to me. And um, again, living with blue dogs, the only way that Bradley's going to stay sane in these times, man. So um, yeah, really, really strong jam right there. And we're going to go now to another single, their third single from this release. We have Wrong Way. And uh, this one's a 47 on the Hot 100. Uh, the trombone solo, oh, okay, it contains an interpolation of the theme from George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. So we're we're uh, just taking um, samples and inspiration from, from everything here. Lyrics of the song refer to the life of a 12-year-old girl named Annie who is forced into prostitution by her family. She's rescued and sexually and ethically violated by the narrator of the song. Oh, man. An ironic twist is added in the lyrical references hinting that the narrator saved her and then regretted mistreating her himself. So, uh, wow. Uh, not holding anything back right here. Let's get into it. All right, wrong way, man. What a uh, what a choice for a single, man, with the subject matter right here. But it was uh, it packed a lot into just two minutes, fifteen seconds, and um, uh, again, uh, leaning heavy into that uh, upbeat ska sound right there, which is just such a you know such a contrast to the lyrical content, which is obviously quite heavy, talking about you know being forced into prostitution here, and then it it, it adds a different element too, where the narrator, you know, a lot of times in these songs, the narrator is just observing, telling what's happened whereas here the narrator is actually the antagonist in the song as well for um how he's you know he's known he's objectifying her it's the wrong way we get that refrain right throughout this entire track it's the wrong way wrong way first talking about you know her upbringing and family with the seven brothers and the dad who put her out on the street how all that's the wrong way and then now he turns it that on himself uh strong if i can but i'm only a man so i take her to the can it's the wrong way so uh, yeah some some slimy 
slimy lyricism right here, man, which I, I think was the idea that obviously Bradley was going for, kind of make you a little bit uncomfortable listening to this uh, track. I think at the end, uh, well, of course we got the trombone in there, um, which was a, a cool little solo, but I, by the time the end comes, she uh, ends up running away. She took the hike um, and got away from him, and um, he kind of uh, is blinded, says, I gave her all that I had to give. She still wouldn't take it. Well, well. I mean, there's a reason she didn't, man. There's a reason. Um, but no happy ending, unfortunately, for this story. But uh, uh, a really strong and uh, powerful tune right there, man. I, I thought uh, Bradley was quite creative in uh, the storytelling right there. And now we're going to same in the end. This one's going to tell multiple stories and um, also uh, going to touch on heroin and um, sexual stuff. So, hey, let's jump into it. All right, same in the end right here. Again, um, quite enjoyed the instrumental on this, especially the guitar, a bit more rocking and loud here. So I thought Bradley did a good job right there. And yet again, packed a lot here into two and a half minutes, man. Touching on, um, you know, a bunch of different parts of uh, um, America and just the world in general. And um, kind of getting some uh, musical references in there from, uh, you know, the uh, Daddy Was a Rolling Stone. Uh, the who's then I can see for miles and miles and miles. Uh, I thought that was good. Dick Butkus even got a shout out right here. So a lot of good play on words right here by Bradley. I uh, um, thought uh, he was a uh, quite clever and you know there's still though a lot of pain in the um, these lyrics um, in particular and um, touching on just uh, that that partying lifestyle, getting up and you know just kind of being stuck in that cycle uh, a lot of the time. Um, back up y'all, it ain't me. Kentucky Fried Chicken is all I see. It's a hellified way to start your day. If I make you cry all night, me and daddy gonna have a fist fight. It ain't personal, it ain't me. That kind of tells you all you need to know um, about the track right there. And uh, now we're going to April 29th, 1992. Miami. Song title refers to the date of the 92 LA riots, of which news spread through the U.S. following the acquittal of four police officers accused um, in the beating of Rodney King, of course. The official title of the song references the date April 29, 1992. However, the lyrics sung is April 26, 1992. It has been said this was a mistake, but the take was strong enough the band kept it. All right, April 29, 1992. Man, a, uh, I, really dug this one. This was a very creative track in the way they uh, put in, inserted the like um, police calls in um, after each verse. I thought that was really well done by uh, the group right here and um, instrumentally too. Just had a really kind of cool sound with that guitar uh, especially that book into the track. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, just it gets stuck in your head, man. So uh, I, I dug that and um, I like uh, I like how Bradley kind of explains, you know, uh, kind of puts you in that point of view of the riots, right? Going to the liquor store, um, going to the music store, getting that PA, man. I know those can be expensive. And, um, you know, talking about the uh, results of the riot, um, you know, people on TV are saying it's the Mexicans, the blacks, man, this and that. Bradley, from his position, says it wasn't about Rodney King and this situation and the police. It's about coming up and staying on top and screaming 187 on an MF and cop, 187 code for murder um so it's uh and then he notes that you know smoke around from the national guard and um you know just that whole scene right there so uh one of my favorites i, I think this will be um one of my favorites whenever i uh, mention them at the end man i uh i thought this was really well done and now we're going to a heavy hitter santeria right here man a uh, another really popular sublime too. I actually know this one. Uh, it was released after Bradley's death and uh, includes a bass line and guitar riff from their earlier track, Lincoln Highway Dub, off of Robin the Hood. Uh, it's an Afro-Cuban religion, Santeria is. Practiced in Cuba, South Florida, and exported to other areas in the Caribbean. Song tells the story of a jealous ex-boyfriend who is planning to take revenge on the man who stole his girlfriend. The man then decides to find a new girlfriend instead. However, the man then mentions using violent force as he describes his plans to pop a cap and uh, stick that barrel uh, straight down Sancho's throat if he ever sees him. Bradley refers to the man as Sancho and his ex-girlfriend as uh, Hina. In uh, Chicano culture, a man who steals another man's girlfriend is often referred to as Sancho. Okay, we're learning today, folks. While a man's woman or girlfriend is referred to as a, uh, a Hina or a Hina, I'm probably butchering that man with my white boy uh, Texas uh, 
<laughs> vernacular here. Um, but uh, that is um, adapted from the Spanish word, which means queen. Okay. It would crack the top five on the Billboard um, Modern Rock charts as well as 43 on the Hot 100. Bassist Eric Wilson said, quote, Originally, I did it on a four track on the previous album, Robin the Hood. And the name of it is just Lincoln Highway Dub. It's an instrumental song on that record, and Brad just put words on it. I couldn't really tell you what inspired it lyrically, but that's just how the song came about. And it went on to be one of our biggest songs. All right, Santeria, coming in, man. A classic tune that, uh, you know, doesn't get old. It's it been a little bit since I heard it. But, uh, man, it fits so well, too, in the context of this record, right? It has, I think, um, just that classic, if you ask anybody what Sublime sounds like, they're uh, going to point to this type of track. I think uh, Bradley, in particular, um, does great on the guitar here, not only in the verses with a very, um, you know, easy on the ears um, melody, but a little solo in the middle as well that I enjoy. Uh, Eric, of course, did a great job on that bass work. And, um, you know, the story does uh, kind of get you, um, you know, captured. Debated, like, oh, what, what's going to happen to old Sancho right here? Chorus, so catchy too, and just uh, kind of calming. You just want to kick your feet back whenever you're listening to it. And um, man, great, great tune. Iconic song from the 90s, I think, just in general. And so uh, now we're going to go to Seed, which I also already have hearted right here. Man, yeah, what a, what a great way to start this album off, man. Uh, definitely looking like it might uh, be in contention for Best Sublime Record for me. But uh, Solo that plays in the middle of this track is a partial cover of the surf rock song Mr. Moto by the Bel Airs. That's all I got on this one, folks. All right, Seed bringing it, man. Short, sweet, to the point. Uh, getting a little bit of a punk action in here kind of reminds me of some of the uh, skate punk groups of the time a uh, little offspring action especially in the uh, percussion in particular i thought this was a strong showing for bud behind the kit and um just again like uh, uh the moments and the really structure of the track right where we start off um where bradley you know he's still you can tell a little energized in that vocal delivery but then boom we flip a switch get the music just going you know full speed and uh you know some kind of gibberish screamed lyrics at points and uh then bring it back up i think kind of reflecting some of the intensity of this relationship right here man so um solid jam right here or else i wouldn't have it hearted right and uh we're gonna go now to jailhouse which is a uh interestingly it's a cover of bob marley and the whalers jailhouse and also tenor saw's roll call so let's check this one out. Right, jailhouse of course leaning heavy into the uh, reggae vocal delivery bradley is here uh, of course when you're covering bob marley and the whalers you got to do that man uh instrumentally everybody's on point right here uh eric in particular um i was again quite impressed with his bass line i kind of like the uh i don't know if it was uh, dj scratches at the very end there or just guitar notes that were uh you know very uh, noisy at the end but uh, i i thought that mixed well with the um the bass line too and the more reggae type of vibe we had throughout the track man i don't think i know the original by marley but obviously bradley updated some of these lyrics right here talking being a youth in 83 had the 89 vision he uh you know even name drops uh bud and eric uh in here as well which was kind of cool and um yeah man all in all i uh I, I don't have a ton to say about the track other than i enjoyed it quite a bit and uh you know don't uh don't sleep on these instrumentals just by themselves man i, I thought they uh did a fantastic job and i'll have to listen to the uh, original uh bob marley version as well but we're gonna go now to i believe the longest song on the record, we have Pawn Shop, which is Bradley's ode to pawn shops. Uh, it also covers a bit of a uh, song by Wailing Souls with a reworked lyrics here. So um, let's see what this one has in store. Um, really obviously inspired by reggae right here. And uh, I thought Bradley did a great job on um, not only the guitar, but also uh, behind the organ as well. Uh, gave it a bit of a different type of um, sound and texture than a lot of the rest of the record had right here and um again just obviously a very slow moving um relaxing uh, type of a uh, vocal delivery here by bradley as well just uh, talking going down by the pawn shop like uh you couldn't help but one wanting to to sing along with it uh you know as it progressed not gonna end up amongst my favorite songs or anything but um still an, an enjoyable track and now we're uh actually gonna do a little one-two punch right here as uh we go to paddle out which is just a minute 15 seconds 
and is a ode um, to uh, all of Sublime's favorite surfing spots uh, located within Santa Cruz, where Bradley initially went to college. And then we got the Ballad of Johnny Butt, uh, which is a secret hate cover. Um, so let's uh, check those out. All right, Paddle Out um, and the Ballad of Johnny Butt. Starting with Paddle Out, man, um, being just over a minute, uh, it brought that you know kind of frantic, punky type energy to it, and uh, you know all the shout outs to, to the surfing spots. I've never been surfing myself, um, and I, I doubt I really ever will be. Uh, <laughs> but uh, man, it looks fun out there, and I thought the almost kind of throwback surf rock. 50s um, guitar sound at the very end was a nice touch. But uh, and then we go to the Ballad of Johnny Butt right here, which um, again showcases how talented a bassist Eric Wilson is, um, being able to weave with the vocals of Bradley so uh, seamlessly. And um, I, I think to the um, so shoot it up, shoot it up, it just don't matter. Then we get to the chorus, we've got a brand new dance. I, I really enjoy the cadence that uh, Bradley sung that in. Uh, it's called We've Got to Overcome. So I think there was a, definitely a reason Bradley chose this, uh, probably hit a little close to home, of course, um, kind of with the, a bit of the drug references and, and that course just to overcome that. Um, so uh, I think I like this song more than Paddle Out, uh, but Paddle Out wasn't bad by any means. I kind of view that more as a, an interlude, so to speak. And so I'll, I'll maybe have to check out Secret Hate um, and uh, what, what their version of this song sounds like. But now we're going to... Um, a, a staple, staple of Chipotle, folks. We got Burritos. A remake of one of Sublime's earliest recorded songs, Fighting Blindly. So let's cue this one up. Burritos. That's getting the heart treatment from me, folks. I both enjoyed the um, the instrumental here. I thought the, the riff in particular was just so catchy. And um, the vocals were almost like they were, um, you know song from you know way across the room or something uh there was uh, it wasn't you know like fully clear so to speak and i, I think that uh, uh that type of um uh, effect uh, really fit the lyrical content quite well um where a guy is just um not necessarily at rock bottom so to speak but he sees his way of life and he wants to change it man he even notes he doesn't want to go and party doesn't want to take the dog for a walk doesn't want to look at the women drink beer all this stuff and um get to the course i ain't getting i ain't getting out of bed today and that's where that riff really uh, became prominent and um you know worked well together um man i i think yet again shows some of that introspection that bradley had some of those ideas of what he wanted to be but unfortunately you you know just wasn't able uh, to be in this life and you know man whenever you don't even want to eat burritos that uh, yeah you're you're down you're down bad and need, need somebody to lift you up right there right um but we have uh five songs left y'all we're gonna go now to under my voodoo song lyrics here talk about a girl being hypnotized in a way by bradley's aura all right uh, under my voodoo definitely uh, different than the rest of the record just sonically right uh of course you could hear the the panning guitar effect in the vein of uh, Jimi hendrix and um in the chorus kind of got some lenny um you know kravitz vibes who of course was very influenced by hendrix so um you know makes sense especially for the era um yeah man all, all in all i uh thought that the chorus was probably the highlight of of the track when we just got the it's under my voodoo and did that guitar was really able to just kind of let loose um yeah man i don't uh, i don't have too much more to add on this track but uh uh, I, I thought it was unique and you know again especially when you get to the uh, end of a track list for a record that you know is around an hour it's good right to kind of do something to stand out in some way and this song definitely did that and now we'll move to get ready this song largely based on the reggae song get ready by frankie paul also contains a sample from the krs one song speech which i believe krs one got a shout out on a previous sublime um record but hey i could be wrong on that let's hear what we got right get ready would have been uh, apropos to play a couple weeks ago on 420 right yeah definitely had that laid back stoner type of um you know uh, mellow sound to it right and uh, lyrics back that up right some folks say that smoking herbs are crime if they catch a smoke and they're bound to drop the dime you know talking about the insufferable inform crazy fools um then talking about you know how they're just trying to call 911 spoil his phone uh, he's gonna play his music loud he's uh, 
uh, in the mood and um, hey, he's just gonna gonna be vibing, enjoying life, man. Not gonna, again, end up amongst one of my favorites, but even these songs that are more kind of a middle of the road on this record, they're still um, enjoy, they're still, you know, enjoyable aspects to them and they're not like skippable or, or anything like that, man. That, that's the mark of a really strong album, right? So now we only have three songs left. We're going to Caress Me Down, 70 million streams on Spotify. Uh, lyrics and melody are primarily from the 1980s track Caress Me Down by Clement. I read, um, and the lyrics are also in Spanglish. So, uh, again, throwing another wrench in here on this record. Let's see what we got. Right, Caress Me Down, the uh, most sexually charged track, and also the funniest at points on here, too, man. Um, I, I thought that uh, whenever the end of verse one in particular was, uh, was quite funny, uh, you know, Pulling out the mushroom tip. I'll just leave that to your imagination right there with the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip. I could definitely tell the band had fun making this one. Again, uh, definitely leans into that reggae type sound that you kind of, uh, you know, just associate with Sublime, man. And um, the inner inner uh, pollation of the uh, the Spanish in there. And shout out to the genius lyrics as uh, I was able to, to quickly translate, you know. Apparently it kind of went down with, uh, with his gal, uh, Mexi. Parents almost uh, tried to kill him. He had to come back with a lot of cash, and um, and then in that last verse, they uh, they they got after it and uh, uh, made that loving sound, you know, made that loving sound that was a uh, reference so much in the chorus, man. So I thought that was a fun track, and now we're gonna uh, end with the what I got reprise here. I don't know if um, if this is going to be uh, you know any different at all than you know what I got at the, the, that we had a track to um, and then we'll uh, go just right into doing time the final track which uh, tell of a cheating girlfriend whose infidelities and poor treatment of her lover makes him feel like he is in prison uh, this was also a single doing time was went to 87 in the hot 100 sample summertime by again George Gershwin um, and uh, track heavily samples uh, the this track from jazz of uh, flute is Herbie Man, a live bossa nova version from his album Herbie Man at the Village Gate. The band originally recorded the song with the lyrics Do in Time and The Living's Easy. In order to release the song using the sample, the band had to agree to use the line Summertime instead of Do in Time. However, the song was already recorded with the Do in Time lyric, and uh, Bradley had, uh, of course, died recently of heroin. The lyric was re-recorded by their friend and producer, uh, Michael Hapadolt, um, I butchered his last name, but he sang Summertime. So the line, and we do it like this and the place to be is also sampled from the Beastie Boys. And uh, it also uh, has a bunch of other samples just uh, thrown throughout here. So um, man, we'll uh, have that to look forward to. But first, let's get to this reprise. And then afterwards, y'all, I'll give my uh, favorite tracks, Shane's favorite tracks, and my overall thoughts on this really good record. All right, doing time, man. What a what a lovely sample of uh, of summertime and just that flute in the background and just in general. There were so many samples in there. I think I you know heard the the Beastie Boys a a, a couple you know different times in there and you know just the whole story in general. You know him against his girl, so to speak, man. And um, you know just feeling feeling trapped in this relationship, so to speak. Um, but I think the the chorus was a definite highlight and um, you know probably my favorite sample actually on the record. Uh, um, just uh, uh, that, that that flute works so well with uh, Bradley's vocals right there. So um, enjoyed that quite a bit. And the What I Got reprise, man, um, I didn't notice a lot of differences from, um, you know, the uh, original uh, What I Got. But uh, hey, man, it, it's one of the best songs on the record. So uh, there, there's worse things to do, I suppose. So um, all that to say, man, let's go now to favorite tracks. I'm going to start with Shane's and then go to mine. Shane's favorites on this are Garden Grove, Same in the End, April 29th. Seed, paddle out, burritos, and get ready. And uh, you know we sh we share a uh, you know some of those favorite tracks. I'll just kind of start from uh, the top, go to the bottom. I'm gonna go with Garden Grove. Uh, the original, what I got. I'm going to also go April 29th. I thought that was a pretty uh, powerful track. Uh, Santeria, uh, kind of basic pick, but uh, got to give that. Um, give some love to Burritos and also this track, Doing Time, that we just finished with. Going now to the overall score of the record, man. I think that this is a um, definite step up from Robin the Hood. Not that it was a bad record, um, but uh, I, I think this is more on par with 40 Ounces to Freedom. Um, kind of on that similar level to me. Um, 
Um, and I, I think it was really consistent throughout. Again, quite creative on the use of the sampling and uh, the different styles from you know, your short punky tunes to, you know, your reggae tunes to your ska um, uh, inspired tunes and um, just rock in general at different points. I thought uh, Bradley did a good job on the guitar as he normally does, um, even um, jumped behind the organ, which worked well. Uh, Eric Wilson, kind of a, a, a hidden MVP on this with his bass work uh, in particular. And uh, man, you have a, a little bit of everything too, talking about, you know, relationship issues, obviously a lot of uh, references to the drugs on here, which is, you know, um, a bit unfortunate obviously with the way Bradley's life uh, ended here um, but uh, I, I think you know bringing a little bit more of those mature uh, themes on there um, still with some of those more kind of laid-back uh, party uh, type of jams um, you know it, it made for a good um, mishmash on the track listing so all that to say man I'm gonna be at like a seven seven five to eight for me I thought this was a really strong record man and a um, even though it obviously wasn't planned a good way for the group to go out and and, um, you know, a very uh, iconic album cover to boot uh, as well. I hadn't uh, noted that, but um, it, it's one of those you, you see the dude with the, the tattooed sublime on his, uh, you know, upper back. Uh, you, you're going to remember that. So uh, let me know your favorite tracks down in the comments below, y'all. And be sure to show Shane some love for uh, suggesting this record and uh, honestly all of Sublime's catalog. Um, you can go check out those uh, other reviews as well after this if you so desire. Let me know your favorite Sublime record. Like I said, it's probably a flip of the coin between this and 40 Ounces to Freedom for me. Um, you know, my heart wants to say just leaning a little bit to 40 Ounces to Freedom, but uh, who knows, maybe on uh, some more repeated listens of some of these newer songs I didn't know um, that uh, this this record will, will rise above it. We'll have to see. But uh, until next time, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Happy listening, and I will see you.